Can you hear me okay? Okay, good evening. My name is Tara Watson Watkins, and I'm the president and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and the Lufkin Daily News, we're honored to have you with us here tonight. Um, it's very important to us as the chamber to be able to bring you uh, information and, and to educate you about things that are going on, whether it's things that are going on politically or things that are going on in our business climate um, or things that are going on even better with uh, new and, and bright things that are coming coming to Lufkin and Angelina County. We're excited that you're here. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, to ask, um, to begin with, if you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would stand, and I thought tonight we'd start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Scott Skelton. He is our Governmental Affairs Chairman. Um, Scott's going to go over the rules and regulations, but I've also asked Scott to lead us in prayer tonight because I think it's vital that we do that as a community to make sure um, that we are here for the right reasons tonight. Scott. Thank you, Tara. Let's start with a prayer, if you'll bow with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the rain that we will need in June and July, and we thank you for quenching the earth. We thank you for the folks in this room, in this community, and all over this great state and great nation. We ask you to bless all of us, to take us and hold us, and to keep us in your bosom. And we just pray that you will continue to bless this great nation. We thank you for leaders that we have now and leaders in the future. We ask your blessings on them of wisdom and uh, discernment, and we ask that you uh, keep them safe. As we go through the tonight, we ask that uh, you help the participants and the audience alike to be respectful of each other and the process. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy who comes through your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And it's in his name that we pray, amen. All right, folks, I'm Scott Skelton. I'm an attorney here in town, so I guess that's why I'm doing the rules. And I just thought about this, Tara. Tara Watkins, or Watson Watkins, I'll get it right. I'm partners with her husband, I ought to know that, right? And Scott Skelton, a lot of alliteration in our two names. So anyway, so folks, um, as you can probably see, I'm not from Fox or CNN, and nor is Tara, although she would look beautiful on TV. So we're not trying to emulate them or be them. We're not here for a debate or controversy or to try to stir up any problems. What we really want to do is to let you get to know the candidates, get to know what they think, get to know what they stand for. And so we don't, we don't do the back and forth and we ask you to turn in your questions and we, we kind of vet those and go through them, although we, don't, we, we take them all seriously. So what we're gonna do here is <clears throat> we're gonna have the, the candidates for the various offices come up and they'll, they'll sit here and each one of them will get two minutes to tell you who they are, what they, what they wanna tell you. And, and it's their two minutes. They can say anything they want, obviously, as long as it's respectful. And then Tara and I have worked uh, diligently on a set of questions that we think are pertinent. And then we have had questions from the audience and we've gone through those and we've added them in. And we'll ask each candidate the same question. We're not gonna play the gotcha game and, and give one candidate this question and one candidate that question. And everybody gets to answer the same question. We'll do that for a while. And um, then we'll, we'll switch to the next race. Now, everybody knows that uh, early voting, who, who knows when early voting start? I do. February the 18th. Okay. So thank God for our democratic process. We live in a country where we get to vote and you need to go vote. And, and, and I, 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 it's probably too late to register, but get registered for next time if you're not registered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those races that are uh, in the Republican primary that, are, that have challengers where there's, where there's actually a race. That's the folks we're gonna do. We're not gonna do every single race because 
some people don't have opponents, and so, uh, frankly, they're elected now. Um, and, and there's not any contested Democratic primaries, so um, we, we, won't, we won't do those either. And then, you know, what, we, what we're not going to do is get into the general election yet. It's way too early. So let me summarize. So we're going to take the contested Republican primary races, because that's all there is, and we're going to do those folks. But before that, we're going we're gonna to let a couple of people speak for two minutes about who they are. And, and let me just tell you how we're going to do this so you'll know the order of the evening and you won't be surprised. So in a few minutes, we're going to ask uh, the, the district attorney uh, elect, frankly, is Janet Castle. She doesn't have an opponent. I'm going to let her introduce herself. And then after that, we're going to do uh, the State Board of Education. We're going to let Mrs. Brenda Davis introduce herself. She's running against Dr. Kevin Ellis, who is the current chairman of the SBOE. And we'll let him introduce himself for two minutes. We're not going to ask them any questions. We're going to let them introduce themselves. Then we're going to get into the meat of the night. We'll start with Constable uh, Precinct 2. That's going to be the first race where we uh, let them introduce themselves, and then we ask questions, and then we'll go to County Commissioner Precinct 1, and then lastly, we'll do the Sheriff. We're going to ask the questions in the order uh, that we drew for. We just drew numbers, and so we'll go in that order, and so there's not anybody that, that, that will be surprised by that. I think the candidates already know that. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Ms. Janet Castles to come forward, just briefly introduce yourself. Um, this will be our new district attorney in January of 2021. Welcome. Good evening. I, I, it may be good or bad to go first, but here we go. Uh, I'd like to thank the chamber and the paper for putting this on for everybody. I'd like to thank them for giving me the opportunity to make an introduction to you. My name is Janet Castles. I'm running to be your district attorney. I am running unopposed. Um, Mr. Skelton was very kind, but in fact, you know, you, you do still have to go through that process that we all respect. You do still have to go and, and cast votes, and, and I don't expect a write-in candidate, but those things are possible. So you will see me very much posture as a candidate. Um, I'm married to Jimmy Castles. Um, we have a law office here in uh, Lufkin, Castles and Reynolds. I, um, I have a Bachelor of Arts from a and I I graduated magna cum laude. I have a Dr. Juris degree from UT Law School. Um, I have been licensed to practice law in your state for going on 25 years this year. Most of that time, I have practiced privately here in town. But uh, I do have some other experience. Back in the early 2000s, I worked for your longtime district attorney, Clyde Harrington. I handled a lot of different kinds of felonies that I prosecuted. Uh, a lot of those cases plea out. Sometimes you have to go to trial. <clears throat> I successfully prosecuted cases at jury trial that included everything from deadly conduct to a drug sales to rape, all the way up to murder and capital murder. Uh, I've worked on appeals. I've done a capital murder writ. Um, more recently, I prosecuted a Nacogdoches. Again, I um, actually wound up filling in for Clyde Harrington, who was helping the DA out over there. He had some responsibilities that called him away from that post before he actually got appointed to be your county court at law judge number two. So I kind of had to laugh when I was writing notes out to talk to you. It seems like my life is just following Clyde Harrington around, but I, I am running to be your district attorney, and I will tell you that uh, it's a really important job. I think that that office and that job has a lot to do with the safety and welfare of your community. Um, that is the last stop in felony prosecutions between your most violent offenders and the rest of the population. It is not an easy job. And it has a lot of far-reaching effects for a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to throw my hat into the ring, and I'd ask all of you for your vote. If anybody would like to ask me any questions, I'd be very available for you. Thank you very much. OK, in my neglect on the rules, I uh, failed to tell you that the, the candidates in your two minutes um, we're timing you, so there's a little timer over here, and it blinks down. So uh, that's not Miss Castle's fault. She didn't know. I, I failed to tell her that. So um, when, when you're up here on stage and you, you'll get two minutes to introduce yourself and one minute to ask each, answer each question, you'll have that. So next, we'll have Miss Brenda Davis, uh, who's running for 
uh, the State Board of Education District 9. Ms. Davis comes to us from Telephone, Texas, near Honey Grove, up in my old stomping grounds. Yeah, so two minutes, Ms. Davis, to tell us about yourself. Good evening. Thank you for coming out on this wet, wet day. Uh, I am Brenda Davis, and first and foremost, I'm not a politician. I am just a retired teacher who is not ready to give up on Texas public education. I have granddaughters that are in public schools. I have grandsons in public schools, and both my children are products of public schools, as my husband and I. I grew up in a small town in North Texas when Texas schools were the standard every other state copied. I want to get us back to that. 46 is not acceptable at all. Um, I also am a graduate of the University of Texas at Arlington with a communications degree and didn't know what I wanted to do with it, so I had to wait till I grew up. And one of the, my professors said, you need to be teaching. And I said, okay. And that was a, how I went up in the classroom. My husband and I moved to Fannin County nearly three years ago from Ellis County. I almost immediately became aware of the lack of infrastructure available in rural schools, in rural counties. I thought, well, if I'm having trouble getting internet at my house and telephone, what must be happening with the rural schools and went into the schools and it was bad. It was bad. We're supposed to take a star test on computers. So anyway, my promise to you is I will make public schools my top priority. I want them to be number one. I'm for the 2025 rule, but I want them better than 25. I want them number one. I want us back like it was in 1969. Again, I'm Brenda Davis. I'm running for the State Board of Education, and I can't do it without your help. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Davis. And Ms. Davis has a table in the back, and if you want to talk to her, she'll be more than welcome to talk to you. All right, and next uh, is the chairman of the SBOE, uh, Dr. Kevin Ellis. Thank you, Scott, and thank you for everyone for coming out tonight. As uh, I'm Kevin Ellis, I'm the chairman of the State Board of Education, and I want to say I'm just very thankful for all the support that I've received from this community. For those of you who don't know me, I've served in this town for over 20 years in my chiropractic practice. Um, I have three kids who went through K through 12 education here in Lufkin ISD. Um, I was honored to serve on, on multiple different boards in the community, one of them being on the Lufkin Quality Schools Task Force. I was also appointed to the Lufkin Triethnic Committee back in 2010. I was elected to the Lufkin ISD Board of Trustees in 2012, and then a, a chosen chair, or I'm sorry, board president of the board by my colleagues in 2015. In 2016, I was elected to the State Board of Education, um, and I was very proud in our Republican runoff we had to have received over 88% of the vote here in Angelina County, so I'm very proud of the support I've received from, from Angelina County. In September of last year, I was appointed by Governor Greg Abbott to chair the Texas State Board of Education. And from all my research and what others have told me that I am the only chair from East Texas to ever chair the State Board of Education. So I was proud during my time on the State Board of Education when I served Lufkin ISD to support teachers and to support rural schools. I was also appointed in 2018 to serve on the Texas Commission on Public School Finance, and I served as vice chair of that. And what that committee did is pass unanimous, unanimous recommendation um, for a draft that led to the, the groundwork for House Bill 3. House Bill 3 was the largest uh, one-time infusion of new money of, to targeted interventions in public schools into things like serving children of dyslexia, funding that. Um, serving pre-K students, those types of things. So very proud to be able to work to have more money going into rural Texas. Rural East Texas public schools have been underfunded for decades, and we needed to make sure that that didn't stay that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. At this time, we'd like to bring up the candidates for the Constable Precinct 2 race. We're gonna bring up Danny Anders and Dennis Cochran. 
Trey Trevathan could not be here with us tonight because his daughter just had surgery at Texas Children's. Um, so we will keep her in our prayers, but we welcome both of you. Thank you. So they actually drew numbers earlier tonight and Dennis Cochran drew number one and Danny drew number two. And so we will begin uh, again. We're going to ask the same questions to both of you. Uh, actually, we'll start with your two minutes. So Dennis, we'll let you start with two minutes. Okay. Like she said, my name is Dennis Cochran. Uh, I'm 53 years old. I've lived in uh, North Angeline County in Central the, all my life, born, raised there. Went to school there and graduated in 85 from Central High School, played sports. Hudson was our rivals, you know, back in the day. Um, had two kids that went to school at Central. Uh, they were the fourth generation for us out that way. Uh, coached youth sports as they were growing up. Um, been in law enforcement 20 years now. Um, I worked at the Lufkin State Sport and Living Center for 29 years of that. I am now retired from the state of Texas and currently working for the state of Texas again with the Texas A&M Forest Service Law Enforcement. Uh, like I say, 20 years of law enforcement, and uh, I want to be a full-time constable for Precinct 2. Uh, that's Central, Hudson, and Redland. Uh, and what I mean by full-time, not just serving civil papers and being the bailiff for the JP. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be out there where the people are at, listening to your concerns, learning from you, and we're going to run crime out of Precinct 2. Thank you. Hang on, I have to figure out how to make it stop. <laughs> okay, Danny Anders. Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Danny Anders. I'm running for Constable Precinct 2 here in uh, the northern part and eastern and southern part of Angelina County. Briefly, uh, I've been in law enforcement uh, 35 years here, five years in San Augustine County, a total of a little over 40 years. Uh, I'm a people person. I, I like to deal with people. I think the constable ought to be seen and interact with the people, not just in one community, but in all the precinct, plus all the county. I think that's what needs to be done. I think it's time for a change. Uh, I agree with Dennis. There needs to be a constable with a marked unit. They need to interact with the people. Uh, they need to do more than just civil papers. They need to interact with people plus their law enforcement. So my deal is to help people if, it, if at all possible. I think that it's time for a change. My speech is very brief, and I'm just about through. <laughs> I, I le I'll leave you with three thoughts. First off, let me, let me, let me say this. If we have, if you're active law enforcement or retired law enforcement, would you stand up? Thank you. Thank you. Three things and I'm gone. 30 seconds. I can do that in 30 seconds. <laughs> One is go vote. Two is my word is my bond. And three is come Sunday morning. Go to the church of your choice. Okay, we're going to start with the first question, and that will go to Mr. Dennis Cochran. And I'm going to ask you, what skills and expertise do you possess that would make you qualified for this position? Well, besides being a peace officer, state of Texas, like you've seen a lot of us in that room, I'm a people person. I, you know, I think that's a qualification when it comes to dealing with people, especially in law enforcement. You know, you, everybody's different. Everybody's personalities are different. Everybody relates to law enforcement and stuff like that. Everybody reacts different to crimes and stuff like that. So I think being well-rounded in, in that, that area, I think that's a big plus, and I, I think I, that's, that's me. I think it came back on. Thank you, sir. All right, and uh, we'll go uh, back to Mr. Anders. What skills and expertise do you possess that would make you qualified for this position? 
40 years in law enforcement would be part of it. And like Dennis said, uh, me and Dennis agree on a lot of stuff. Uh, you, you've got to be able to interact with the people. For the last 12 years, I've been at uh, Central Independent School District where I'm employed as a police officer. The young people is our future. And you've got to deal with them as well as you deal with the other people. You've got to deal with people as constable. I'm through. That's all it. Right. All right. Under Thank the 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. We'll uh, go back to Mr. Cochran. Uh, what do you consider your greatest strengths and your greatest weaknesses uh, when you consider this job? Well, I, I, I think interacting and dealing with people and, and different personality, I think is my strength. Uh, and maybe I have too big of a heart sometimes, so that's a weakness. I'll, I'll admit that real quick. I, I like helping people. And law enforcement and, and then the fire service, which I do both, that, that is helping people. You know, law enforcement may, may be at their worst times or even, you know, at a fire or automobile wreck. But I think I bring calmness to the situation because and, and, I, I can deal with people's personalities, good or bad. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, back to you, Mr. Anders. Uh, what do you consider your greatest strengths and any weaknesses that you may have? Me and Dennis didn't compare notes before we come up here. <laughs> but deal dealing with people and being able to deal with people, being able to help people is a, a, a lot of the situation. And like he said, sometime I'm a little lenient. I have a big heart. Uh, I'm retired fire chief from over brought us many years ago a whole lot different not as many years as Dennis but you see people in law enforcement and in the fire service at sometimes their lowest points and the deal is to help them to get back up and go again thank you sir all right this will be uh, our last question for you two and and it's kind of open-ended but I'll start back with you uh, mr. Cochran and the question is why should the voters vote for you rather than your opponent, Mr. Anders or Mr. Trevathan? Because I can guarantee you I'm going to work 40 plus hours a week. I, you know, with a lot of people live in Hudson and the central and Redland area kind of see what's been done, you know, and, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm working 40 plus hours a week. I already do that. Um, and, you know, the, the money dictates a full time constable. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. Back to you, Mr. Anders. Why should the voters uh, support you rather than either one of your opponents? Partly because of my experience and partly because the constable is a full-time job. And that's what I intend to do and being seen in the community, dealing with people, marked units, and doing more than just civil papers, that type thing. I want to be a part of my whole precinct and the county. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, give them both a round of applause for coming up. Also, give them a round of applause for setting a great example of how this is done. Next up, we'd like to bring up the, um, those that are running for county commissioner, Precinct 1. Tonight, we have with us um, Greg Harrison and John Vaughn. Let's give them another round of applause while they get set up. So we'll do the same thing as we did uh, a few minutes ago. Um, they both drew numbers earlier. Uh, Mr. Vaughn drew number one. Mr. Harrison drew number two. And so you'll get to start with your two-minute opening, and we'll let you start. 
Ready? Mr. Vaughn. Okay. I want to thank everybody for coming today. First off, I'd like to apologize. I'm a little bit under to the weather, uh, so you have to bear with me. My name is John Vaughn. I was born and raised in Lufkin, Texas. My lovely wife, Amanda, we have two sons, Hunter, that's 15, and Cullen, that is seven. They both attend Central ISD. I have over 18 years of experience running a business from rolling up my sleeves and taking charge in daily ex operations to managing employees and, em and equipment. I know how to get it done and keep the expenses within budget. I have a successful and diverse background in various areas of business. I have developed a unique skill set as a result. As your county commissioner, I am ready to put these skills to work by ensuring that our roads are safe and well maintained, making sure that your tax dollars are used wisely. I believe in doing the right thing, and that includes not doing things just for the sake of appearance. As your commissioner, when you see a crew working on your road, you can rest easy knowing that there's no shortcuts taken under my watch. I believe in going the extra mile and doing it right the first time and ensure that no one's time or tax dollars are wasted. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. You ready for me? I'm trying to make it stop again. Okay. Greg? My name is Greg Harrison. First, I want, I want to do this. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Uh, and I also want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've, I've, uh, I've been county commissioner for five plus years. Uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I will say this much, uh, I've learned about Mother Nature. You talk bad about her, she's gonna rain on you again. And uh, that's, that's not a good thing. So we, uh, I, will, I wanna be the one that, that brags on somebody right quick though, my, my wonderful family. Uh, they're here tonight and I appreciate it. I also have a crew here. Uh, I, I'm the one commissioner, every one of us is gonna say we have the best crew in the world, but it's me. I promise you that. They're good, hardworking guys. People, you got to understand that we don't, we don't have all we need to, to do what we want to do. We, we've gotta come up with some more diverse ways to, of getting money to, to be funding to, for these roads we got out here. Uh, the last five years it's rained. Hey, these roads have been wet underneath for five years. The roads are cracking, I know they are. It, it, uh, I promise you, if, if there was anything I could do about it other than just patching right now, I, I, I would. Uh, I want to rebuild roads. It's gonna, sun's gonna shine one day. And when it does, we're gonna get busy. But uh, it's gotta shine, so I, yeah. Uh, but thank y'all very much, and I, and I appreciate, each and every, appreciate each and every one of you being here. So thank you. So we'll begin, um, Mr. Vaughn, with the first question. What do you see as the most pressing needs for infrastructure or capital projects in the county? First of all, I do believe it is the roads. And uh, maintaining the roads, uh, cutting the ditches, and uh, making sure that all the roads are patched. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people that are not quite happy right now. I've talked to a couple one of them already in the crowd. And uh, I think the biggest thing is just make sure that all the residents here in Angelina County are, are happy. Mr. Harrison, I'll ask you the same question. What do you see as the most pressing needs for infrastructure or capital projects in the county? 
Well, I brought it up a while ago. It's definitely roads. But the, the problem we have is, is uh, we're going to have to, like, like I said a while ago, we're going to have to come up with some funding to get these roads fixed. Uh, I, you know, I, I, get, I get calls every day. Hey, my road's got a pothole in it. We try our best to go fix it. The first of the year, every year, we have a budget. But the sad part about it is it's so small that we spend it patching before it's time to rebuild roads. And we, we've got to get rid of, away from that and get us, get us some money to, to rebuild our roads. I'm good. Mr. Brown, let me go back to you. If money was available, new money was available, what one area of county services would you feel most needs additional resources? Say that one more time. Sure. If new money was available, what one area of county services would you feel most needs additional resources? Okay, so uh, I believe that everybody is equal, so it should be, the money should be equally uh, placed with everybody. So, Mr. Harrison, the same question? Well, if the only, thing, only difference I have with that, and that was a good answer, John, uh, I, would, I would go into the uh, law enforcement side of it because we, we, we've got to have some space for our our, bill, our employees now. Our, our, our courthouse, we're doing a little work in it right now, but we're, try, we're trying to get it so we can get the prisoners moved on out. And the only way you can do that is, is get a, a, a better setup for our DA and judges and, and uh, so, but, but two, uh, I, was tell, I was telling somebody the other day, I, I have, there's 33 entities in our, in our county. I say entities, there's 33 different what was I don't I can't get the word now. It's entities. How's that? But but the thing about it is we every one of them need help. And and if we can if we got a little extra money like you said, we we would try to try to split it that away. So that was not my bell. <laughs> uh, okay. It was good timing though. Perfect. Mr. Vaughn, should any part of the county budget be shielded from cuts? And if so, which area? Say that one more time. If any part of the county budget should be shielded from cuts, and if so, which area should be shielded? Well, first of all, I don't believe there should be any cuts for any of the departments. Um, you know, there's a reason why they're there in the first place. So uh, I personally don't think of, of any, so. Mr. Harrison, should any part of the county budget be shielded from cuts, and if so, which area? Uh, I, I'm with John. We, you know, every, every office that we have is there for a purpose. And, and uh, but the thing about it is, if, if there's gonna be one that's not shielded, is that what you're saying? Uh, there, there should not be one at all. I mean, we every every department that we have is there for a purpose, and we all have to work together. So no, I, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut nobody, and uh, at all. So. All right. The next series of questions, and there are three of them, uh, or two of them rather are about a unit road system. So I'm just gonna read the question. Uh, a committee of Angelina uh, County citizens have been formed to secure 2,800 signatures to present to the commissioner's court to have them call an election on the issue of the adoption of a unit road system. First to you, Mr. Vaughn, are you in favor of adopting a unit road system? Okay. so. I've actually been asked that quite many times already. And uh, you know, this is, it's a really hard question to answer. And personally, without asking more people that are on the commissioner's board and uh, more people in the community, it's really hard to make that uh, answer. So uh, I really just can't make a decision on that right now. 
Okay, fair enough. And back to you, uh, Mr. Harrison. Uh, are you in favor of adopting, adopting a unit road system? No. And I'll tell you why. First place, uh, when you have a unit road system, you still have the same crews, same equipment, same fuel being used, same everything. But you're going to have something else. You're going to have a $200,000 a year engineer and a $150,000 a year road boss that's going to take care of all four precincts. If we have $350,000 extra to spend, give it to us and let us, let us put it in these roads out here. Thank you. All right. All right. The second question um, is, if you were elected commissioner, Mr. Vaughn, would you be willing to have the commissioner's court call an election without the need for the 2,800 signatures? One more time. All right. As a, com as a commissioner, would you be willing to have the commissioner's court call an election without the need for the 2,800 signatures needing to be gathered? Well, I believe... I believe that if it's if it's the proper thing to do to have the signatures, then that's what we need to do. All right, to you, uh, to you, uh, Mr. Harrison, would you be willing to call an election without the necessity of gathering the 2,800 signatures? If the if the uh, if the necessity of having 2,800 signatures is something that's it's by law, we we need to we need to go by that. So that's the way I feel about that. Thank you. Thank you. And those questions actually came from Bob Flournoy. Mm -hmm. Um, the second question is actually from the Kurth Animal Shelter Advocates. Um, the Kurth Animal Shelter Advocates are aware that the county follows the law set by the state of Texas concerning animal welfare. If elected, would you seek to improve or exceed the current laws in place? And if so, what changes would you work to implement? Mr. Vaughn. Say that one more time. Kurth Animal Shelter Advocates are aware that the county follows the law set by the state of Texas concerning animal welfare. If elected, would you seek to improve or exceed the current laws in place? And if so, what changes would you work to implement? Um, well, I am actually for the animals, and, uh, and I believe that we should do everything that we can to help them. So if, if that means that that's what we need to do, then that's what we need to do to get it done. So. Mr. Harrison? You'll need to ask that question again. I will do it. <laughs> I, let me tell you why. I've been a commissioner for five years plus, and I haven't ha had to deal with animals yet. So. Okay. Well, here you go. Okay. Kurth Animal Shelter Advocates are aware that the county follows the law set by the state of Texas concerning animal wel welfare. If elected, would you seek to improve or exceed the current laws in place? And if so, what changes would you work to implement? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, what, Kurth, they, would have, they just need to come see us and say, we need this, and we would try our best to help them. I mean, the court, the court has to, there's not one person that can do anything on this court. It, take, it takes three of us or the court, you know, and, and, and we've got a very good court right now that works hard to, to help. So if they came to us and said, hey, we need help, and, and trust me, I'm for animals, so, but uh, if, if they came to us and said that they needed some changes, we would look into it and see what we could do for them, so. Well, thank you both so much for your time. That works. Good job, buddy. Bravo. Thank you. Good job. Good to see you. Okay. We are now coming to the sheriff's race. We have uh, three folks running for Angelina County Sheriff. Our present sheriff, uh, Sheriff Greg Sanchez, uh, Mr. Terry Free, and Mr. Brian Hawley. You may take the, the podium. And as we did with every other race, we drew for four slots on who goes first, second, and in this case, third. And so we will start 
with Mr. As I get the timer correct, so that we do it right, we will start with Mr. Brian Holly. You have uh, two minutes to introduce yourself and, and, and tell about yourself. All righty. I'm Brian Holly, and I am running for Sheriff of Angelina County. I am 53 years old, and I have been a proactive law enforcement officer in this county for 28 years. I was also an international police officer in Liberia, Africa for one year as well. Over my career, I have worked as a patrol deputy, narcotics officer, criminal interdiction officer, canine handler, SWAT team, SWAT team leader, patrol sergeant, and patrol lieutenant. I know what it takes to have this county safe. I know what it takes to have beneficial, beneficial positions in this county that will assist the Sheriff's Department as well. One thing I'd like to bring up that's dear to me is the use and distribution of illegal narcotics in Angelina County. Some people believe, or some opponents believe, that um, they don't have a, a, a real serious narcotics problem in this county. Unfortunately, uh, we do, and I think everybody knows we do. It's absolutely time that we get back on this and make a full-fledged narcotics unit that we can have out there every day of the week. And we have got to get back on to it because if we don't, we're ultimately just going to have a, you know, just ripple effect crimes all over the place. It's my ultimate goal to have a uh, narcotics unit that will work well and be there for the, all the local agencies as well as the surrounding counties. I want to get I want to get these people to band together and let's have us like a area task force, if you will. We share intel and we share officers and then and we get some assistance there. All right, thank you, sir. That's your two minutes. All right. All right. Next, introduce yourself, Mr. Terry Free. Oh yes. First of all, can everybody hear me okay? Um, first of all, I like, uh, would like to extend a, uh, a thank you to Greg uh, for your professionalism and how you've ran your campaign as far as I'm concerned. I thank you. Thank you. My name is Terry Free, and I'm running for the office of Sheriff of Angelina County. The position of Sheriff is an executive position, and the most qualified candidate should have the privilege of being elected. Now's the time for the voters to do their research and elect a person that truly has the knowledge, skills, and abilities to best perform the job. The job of sheriff is much larger than just law enforcement. My experience, my continued personal and professional development prove that I'm the most qualified candidate with the ability to manage the programs, manage the people, and most importantly, manage the budget. I'm a homeowner and taxpayer in Angelina County. And taxpayers' dollars are of the utmost importance to me. And seeing hard-earned taxpayers' dollars wasted really motivates me to drive positive change. I served this county for over 26 years on the environmental side of the law, and now I want to be able to better serve the citizens of Angelina County on a higher level. I do not want to be the face of the Sheriff's Department. I want to be the pace of the Sheriff's Department. I've spent time, and if you've watched my, my programs, I've spent time developing a structured plan and have a strong commitment to serving the citizens of Angelina County and making the Angelina County Sheriff's Department a community policing agency the cities of the county can be proud of. My plans are sound and I've not been afraid to make them known. Now's the time for the citizens to stand up and vote for a positive change for the county, and that starts by electing me as the new sheriff of Angelina County. Vote for professionalism, morals, ethics, and integrity. And I will say this. That, that's your time, sir. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Two minutes goes faster than you think, folks. All right. And, and uh, certainly uh, not least, but, but last in this case, uh, Sheriff uh, 
Greg Sanchez. You have two minutes to tell the folks about yourself. Well, thank you all, and thank you. <clears throat> I'm very pleased to be able to serve uh, Anseline County uh, for sheriff for seven years, and I'd like to also give the compliment back to Terry Free for running a civil campaign and uh, putting his issues out there, the platform out there as well. I, you know, my name's Greg Sanchez. Like I said, I've been sheriff for seven years, going on my eighth year, and I am married. I've uh, got two children and uh, four grandchildren. Um, I was, uh, before I became sheriff, I, I was a trooper for 29 years. Uh, prior to that, I also worked for the Yanceling County Sheriff Department for a year and a half in the jail. In about 10 months, I was a deputy for the Yanceling County Sheriff Department. In the year th uh, 2012, I ran for sheriff, was elected, and started my uh, career as sheriff in 2013. I just want to say that the Anseline County Sheriff Department has come a long ways. I talked about this in Savala, talked about the, the obstacles that we had when we got there, uh, everything from the accountability of what was going on with the, with the department, uh, from everything from car books to timesheets to um, their um, maintenance of their vehicles, um, weekly reports. There was a lot that was lacking in professionalism and policies as well. There was no policies. And so policies, policies are very important to run a law enforcement agency. And we've come along, I have a great administration We've been tough on crime. We've been tough on drugs. We have great patrol unit and patrol deputies that do their job, and I'm very thankful for what they do. Um, I will say this. We have the best Angeline County Sheriff Department in the history of this county. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. We'll begin uh, with the questions. We also want to say that uh, a lot of the questions that actually Scott and I wrote are questions that the audience mem members asked. And so if you don't hear your name called, we have tried to tie in some of your questions with some of ours that are already written. Uh, so we want you to know that we've combined those. Um, Mr. Hawley, we'll start with you first. Um, what is Angelina County's most pressing law enforcement issue? And what will you do to change issues as the sheriff? Okay. You're ready. All right. Uh, again, I fall back to the uh, to the narcotics aspect is, is one of the most pressing issues as far as on the law enforcement side. We've got to get a handle on it. We've got to get get to where. Uh, I mean, we, we we share the intel with other people, um, and we have our officers out there just really doing real good investigations. Um, Secondary on that is also working with the county commissioners, working with the county commissioners on a regular basis, making sure that we have a good short-term and long-term plan. And if you have that plan and you work with them on a regular basis, you'll get the job done, you'll get the equipment you need, you'll get wages, and you'll get slots. Thank you. Mr. Free, the same question to you. What is Angelina County's most pressing law enforcement issue, and what will you do to change issues as sheriff? Twofold. First and foremost is the drug interdiction program uh, that's non-existent. Uh, if you've watched my, my videos, I have a three-phase program to attack the drug problem that we have in Angelina County. First and foremost is putting a drug task force together at the sheriff's department. Secondly, is putting together a concerned citizens group that I'll meet with on a monthly basis uh, to give me insight on what's going on in the county and how we can make things better. Third is implementing a drug education program in our school systems that's going to aid with that. The second fold of that is something's going to have to be done with our animal control issues in the county. It is an issue uh, with animal cruelty. Uh, I've got the education in the background to take care of that and bring forth policies uh, that will be a little more strict in Angelina County uh, than the state has to offer. Thank you. Sheriff, what do you believe is Angelina County's most pressing law enforcement issue, and what will you do if you're reelected to change issues as sheriff? Well, just like every county in the state of Texas, 254 counties is drugs. And uh, the Anseline County Sheriff Department has done a good job in uh, being tough on drugs. 
we have uh, our record of uh, uh, sales and our record of possession is, is, is higher than the, the previous administration. Not only that, have we uh, been enforcing the drug laws on the state level, but we have also increased our level of federal uh, sentencing of our, our drug enforcement. We've at least got 49 sentences that equal over 350 years that those people will be put away uh, and out of our county uh, for uh, drug violations. Uh, another pressing issue uh, is to, to continue to update that uh, drug enforcement with one more uh, narcotic that hopefully we'll get this next year to increase uh, from one to two, but we have one there now that works with our lieutenant and also our sergeant, which does a good job of enforcing our drug enforcement in Angelin County. Thank you, Sheriff. All right. <clears throat> our, our next question came from the audience. It says, uh, and, and we'll start with you, Mr. Holly. How do you okay. feel about neighborhood crime watches? Do you support them? and how will you work with them? Well, I mean, neighborhood crime watches are a necessity. Um, we all know, I mean, law enforcement would like to be everywhere at once, but we just simply can't do it. But uh, if we've got somebody out there actively watching out for their neighborhoods, they call in when they see something suspicious or something going on, man, I support that all the way. I mean, that's what we gotta have, uh, citizen interaction with us. We can't do it all by ourselves. And uh, I will help any citizens group like that, uh, Neighborhood Watch, uh, get set up, get started, and we would also recognize, you know, that they are, they are the absolute uh, need for us. All right. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> to you, Mr. Free, the question is, do you, how do you feel about Neighborhood Crime Watches? Do you support them? and how would you work with them? Again, neighborhood crime watches are essential. That's part of my program that I want to put together with my concerned citizens group uh, that's going to be spread out through the county, that's going to be extra sets of eyes and ears uh, that are going to let us know what's going on. Not only that, but I'm going to use that concerned citizens group uh, to hold me accountable for the job that I'm doing. And not only that, when you call, we're going to come. If I have to come personally, your problem will be taken care of. All right. <clears throat> and to you, Sir, Sheriff Sanchez, how do you feel about neighborhood crime watches? Do you support them? And how would you work with them? <clears throat> yes, I do support them. There, you always need the help of the citizens, and citizens have always done that. And I've have worked with a lot of crime watch programs when, while I was a trooper, and as well as a sheriff, uh, meeting in um, neighborhoods like the Bald Hill area, the Central area, and the Hudson area, uh, the county. Uh, either taking a deputy along, or I've also have worked with other constables uh, that have met uh, with these citizens talking about the things they can be on the lookout for, have a little, what we call a small training class with them, but also be able to relate our numbers and their numbers uh, back and forth to where we can communicate with each other either by internet or by email or by phone, and so we can pass this information along to each other. It is a great program. All right, the next question, uh, all three of you have been involved in law enforcement, so it's apropos to ask this. What has been your greatest accomplishment in your professional career? And then secondly, in your personal life, to you, Mr. Holly. I think one of my most greatest accomplishments was when I was, when I was in Liberia, Africa. Um, we actually started a, uh, or rebooted a police force in Liberia from zero. I mean, literally, uh, pen and paper was a luxury. And I think that's when we are able to build up a whole law enforcement agency from zero. Um, I mean, everything from setting policy every, and, and sending people to the academy in a different country. Um, and we brought them up to the standard of what we, we are here in uh, the United States as far as law enforcement. And uh, I think that was a real good accomplishment of mine. And what was the second part of it? And what's your greatest uh, uh, accomplishment in your personal life? Uh, family. <laughs> family, my kids, my wife, um, 
bringing them up correctly, bringing them up like my mom and dad brought me up. Thank you. All right. Thanks, sir. <laughs> and to you, Mr. Free, what has been your greatest accomplishment, both professionally and personally? Professionally, it's plain and simple. Like I said, I served the citizens of Angelina County for 26 years uh, in the environmental side of the law. That has been my greatest accomplishment, serving the citizens of Angelina County. And I want to continue to do that as sheriff. That is the sole purpose of my mission of being sheriff. Uh, you, you can't get around that. Uh, the citizens are the, of the utmost importance. And, and again, from the professional side, uh, that can't be touched. On the personal side, like I said, I can't, can't overlook my, my true family. Uh, just got blessed with a grand new grandbaby. Um, that's the, oh gosh, just the love of my life. Thank you. All right. And to you, Sheriff Sanchez, what has been your greatest accomplishment in your professional career and in your personal life? Well, I'm going to tell you, go back. When I was uh, young, I was 20 years old and joined DPS. I was accepted. Back then, there was a lot of people applied, and it was, a, it was an honor to get into DPS. And through working through 29 years and all the training that I was able to receive as being a state trooper uh, prepared me to walk in to be sheriff. And also, through that experience and through the honor of being a trooper, it also attracted good people, such as my chief and my captain and other people that came along with me uh, to the Anseline County uh, Sheriff's Department to bring good structure, accountability, and professionalism uh, to that department and hold people accountable uh, to that. And on a personal level, it would be my family, my wife, and my kids, uh, of course, they're not kids anymore, but they're grown. And then my grandkids as well. You know, you can't, your family is everything. Mm -hmm. Mr. Holly, we go back to you, and this is a question um, from the audience. What is your plan to combat the attrition rate at the sheriff's office because of deputies leaving for better paying positions? Well, I think that absolutely starts from leadership. I mean, uh, you definitely just have to have somebody that's in there willing to be in there and uh, listen to the people that are working for them, uh, going to bat for them 100% is, you know, within the wages and equipment and uh, other positions that they can recruit up to or promote to. I think they would actually um, actually be there to stay you know if you give them if you give them something to do uh, they, they they would want to stay they would want to promote up and they want to go into different activities within the law enforcement mr. <clears throat> free the same question what is your plan to combat the attrition rate at the sheriff's office because of deputies leaving for better paying positions first of all you have to as a leader you have to look yourself in the mirror and decide one is the problem actually you uh, because people do not always leave just because of pay uh, but unfortunately that's something we're going to have to tackle law enforcement officers do not make a lot of money period that's something that we're going to have to work with the commissioners on to try to get that improved uh, that's something that nobody can dispute uh, but we just have to keep combating that but not only that, uh, with my diverse background, I've been a supervisor, uh, own businesses. You have to know how to motiv motivate those people to do a good job. And with the proper motivation, they will go out there and serve the citizens of Angelina County in the capacity that is needed. Sheriff, the same question to you. What is your plan to combat the attrition rate at the sheriff's office because of deputies leaving for better paying positions? Well, keep standing up for the deputies like I have been doing. You know, if gas is $3 down the road, and, and if you go the other way, it's $2 down the road, which one are you going to go to? You're going to go where it's cheaper. And uh, that's what's happening. We're losing deputies to school districts that are paying $10,000 or more. And that, that is unreasonable for a county law enforcement to be paying low pay like that. Those guys are putting their life on the line every day. The job they do is just as important as any other law enforcement agency uh, in this state. 
And uh, I'm going to keep standing up for the deputies uh, as long as I'm sheriff to make sure they get the, the pay they need so we can retain and attract and retain deputies. All right, next question. Back to you, Mr. Hawley. Uh, the question is, what do you see as the sheriff's primary role? Well, the sheriff's primary role is the chief conservator of the peace of the county, maintain uh, law and order within, within the county. And in doing such, it's definitely uh, keeping people working for you, having good staff. Uh, you know, you got, you got to be a little bit of everywhere at once, if you will, as a sheriff, and I know that. Uh, we can make that happen. I mean, we, we, we can be here, we can be there. We can have a lot more deputies out there just uh, being in areas. All right, next to you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Free, next to you, what do you see as the sheriff's primary role? The sheriff has several roles. One, as the administrator of the jail, overseeing it to make sure it runs properly, safe, and keeping uh, it health and safety for the inmates that are in there. Overseeing the sheriff's department, and motivating those people to do a fantastic job. But not only that, it's about managing a budget. Managing the people within that budget and manning, managing all the programs that are contained within the Sheriff's Department. And that's what I want to bring to the Sheriff's Department is that management skill to move it into the future. <clears throat> And to you, Sheriff Sanchez, what do you see as the sheriff's primary role? Well, it's an administrator. You're over, you know, the Anselin County Sheriff's Department budget is $8.8 .8 million, 33.8% of the county budget. And the Anselin County Sheriff's Department has done a good job of staying, um, and being conservative with the budget and never going into the red. The Sheriff Palmer has been run very well. We have good people that make sure uh, that the uh, budget is done properly and that the, the, sheriff, the sheriff is also responsible to make sure we get good contracts uh, with our vendors, uh, make sure that we have the right proper patrol that's being taken care of for the citizens out there and people just walking in, the public, that want to talk to the sheriff uh, because he is elected. Is it, It's an office of the people and making sure you're available to the people. And we'll end tonight with the final question of why should voters support you over your opponents? Mr. Holly. Well, I think, um, I think my experience is, uh, is pretty big. I mean, I, like I said before, I know how to make things happen in this county when it comes to law enforcement. I know how to make things happen with the county commissioners. I will work with those county commissioners every day, like I've said. And I will work with the work with the officers, and uh, I think that's probably the biggest. I mean, work with the officers, work with the county commissioners. Let's make some things happen that haven't been happening. Thank you. Mr. Free, why should voters support you over your opponents? Over my my history, my work experience, my diverse background, not only in law enforcement. Uh, animal control issues, litter abatement issues, I'm a, f a fire inspector, arson investigator. I bring the skills that's needed to be able to head that sheriff's department and pass those skills on to other people and promote positive teams within that department that are going to do the best job for the citizens of Angelina County as possible. But it's not only that, being able to stand up, know that if we need to have stricter laws in Angelina County, not being afraid to stand up to get those laws passed, work with the commissioners, educate them on why we need those laws uh, to make it better for Angel the citizens of Angelina County. Thank you. Sheriff Sanchez, why should voters support you rather than your opponents? 
Well, i tell you why, because the Anselm County Sheriff's Department is the best sheriff's department in history here. We've been the most transparent sheriff's department that ever has been put together. The annual report that comes out, it's not a DPS annual report, it is a county annual report. It has never been done in the history of this county. We hide nothing, we've been transpar transparent with everything that we do. We have the record to back it up. When the crime is, uh, has went down, uh, it has not went up like some people have said. If you look at the, uh, the uh, crime rate, it is very, it is low. If you look at the sheriff department as a whole, we've done a, a, a well-rounded job with every department uh, at the Angelina County Sheriff's Office, and I'm proud of the administration that I have. I'm proud of all the deputies as well. Thank y'all very much. Let's give them another round of applause. You did good. Again, on behalf of myself and Scott, the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce and the Lufkin Daily News, we appreciate you coming tonight. We appreciate you being respectful, um, but more importantly, we encourage you to vote because that's all we can do to make a difference is vote. Um, but we also appreciate all that you do for Lufkin and Angelina County. Thank you and good night.